Good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to the first episode of PCR Online Learning from Master. I'm Eduardo Zancanaro, a cardiac surgery resident from San Rafael Hartwell Center in Milan. And for me, it's a pleasure to introduce you and to interview Antonio Colombo, one of the most important figures in the cardiology field. Welcome, Professor. Welcome and thank you for this opportunity. I thank you also PCR Online for this huge opportunity for a resident that can talk with a master in the field. Professor, I will ask some question uh, and uh, I'm very happy that uh, we can have this really interesting chat. The first question would be, why did you decide to become an interventional cardiologist? Uh, because uh, I wanted to have a clear impact uh, on uh, therapeutics. At the time I was studying cardiology, uh, there was very little impact uh, except few medication, nitrates, uh, a decreasing size of MI. As a matter of fact, I, I wanted to become a cardiac surgeon. And, uh, interesting, really interesting. Interventional cardiology was a shortcut to put my hands on the corners without uh, doing such an extensive training uh, as is demanded for cardiac surgery. Thank you, this is really an interesting thing, uh, fact. And do you think that since you, your idea was the first to become a surgeon, the surgeon, a cardiac surgeon will have a role in the coronary field in like in the next years, in 10 years, 20 years, what do you think about it? Yes, I, I think yes. But my view is maybe is a little bit different from the common view. I think the surgeon has to have a role in decision making with the cardiologist, with the interventional cardiologist. But a good surgeon is a good surgeon, and a good intervention is a good interventionist. Of course, there are exceptions. I think in your hospital, you have an exception. Professor Maizano is a, yes. a, it's a blend between the two, but this is not the rule. Mm. I, my okay. view is that uh, uh, surgery is a complex work. Uh, even coron I mean, coronary surgery well done is excellent, is excellent. So I think a good surgeon is a good surgeon. And it's more difficult to be a good surgeon than a good interventionist. Okay, thank you. And what, so in light of that, what do you think about the new idea that probably in the next 10, 20 years, there will be a sort of intermediate figure, a cardiac interventionist, which means, which is not a surgeon, which is not a cardiac in, uh, uh, interventional cardiologist, but is a combined figure. And there will be the disappearance yeah, yeah, I, of both. I totally understand. I think this is, is, a, is an exception. These are some surgeons that uh, do not like to be surgeons and they prefer to be interventionists. Okay. So they embrace uh, the field, which is nothing wrong, uh, nothing wrong. But uh, I, I don't think that every surgeon should become an hybrid. Uh, okay. You know, surgery, well done is a complex field. You need a lot of dedication, a lot of time. And the same applies uh, to, uh, to interventional, uh, structural interventions and coronary. So uh, I think uh, if you want to do both, uh, of course, Leonardo da Vinci is always there, yes. but uh, I would not uh, uh, consider these uh, as a standard. Okay. And what do you think instead in your field, particular field of interventional cardiologist, uh, cardiology, the things that there is, there is a subspecialization of the field, but now, and now we are, we, are, we are seeing more and more, but do you think that this, this is something that also, for example, resident or in training doctor should be, should we embrace immediately or they should wait and uh, well, at the no, end of the training, yeah, for that's example? A, that's a good question. They should, uh, they should wait. I did, uh, I did four years of internal medicine before becoming a cardiologist. Okay. So uh, I don't know when I punctured my first artery, but was uh, was long time after graduation. So 
uh, I think, uh, especially even in the field of cardiology, is essential now for an intervention is to do a solid rotation in echo. There's no way a cardiologist, an interventional cardiologist, should not be able to do himself a transesophageal echo, a transthoracic echo, because it's so important imaging, uh, especially if you want to do structural, that uh, is a must. So, but before that, uh, internal medicine, maybe not four years, but at least two or three years of internal medicine, then cardiology, including uh, a solid non-invasive cardiology, and then you go to invasive. It's really interesting. Thank you so much. The last question is, uh, and this is really one of the most important questions, uh, what uh, what are your key recommendations for the next generation of not only cardiologists but also surgeons, cardiac surgeons like like me in that in that sense? What's your suggestion? But, uh, follow follow your your dreams. Do not be seduced too much by the industry. The industry mm -hmm. is fundamental, but. Uh, keep uh, an independent position. It's not a, you can have conflicts of interest, it's fine, uh, but we need to be able uh, to, to master the conflict of interest, not to become dependent upon conflict of interest. Our mind, our view as a physician, as a scientist has to be dominant. Then the industry there, the industry is fundamental. Without industry, you do nothing. So don't, uh, don't be uh, critics against the initiative promoted by industry, but maintain an intellectual independence. Perfect. Thank you very much, Professor Colombo, for, for this really interesting insight and uh, for your time. And I thank you all for, for the attention and PCR online for this first episode and will be other really interesting episodes about learning from master. Thank you very much and uh, I hope to see you very soon. <laughs>